to John chapter 12, verse 37 through 38. I'd like to give honor to Pastor. He's not here right now, but I'd like to give honor to him for giving me this opportunity, as well as Pastor Bembry and uh, Pastor Walters, who's here tonight. So we're going to have some church tonight. So uh, the Bible says, but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him that the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? You may be seated. And if I could title this tonight, it would be, Whose Report Do You Believe? We, we had a phenomenal youth camp. I've been to youth camp for over seven years, and by far I can say that this was the most spiritual spiritual warfare camp I have ever been to and on Thursday night something very particular happened um, there was no preaching actually the Holy Ghost just took over and brother Nichols told all the youth groups to get together and we all started praying for the church and God gave me a vision and what I saw was on the building of this church there was an angel fighting against a demonic entity then all of a sudden, in my left ankle, I started feeling this tingling feeling. And I went down and I took a knee. And then God put in my mind Genesis 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Meaning that the seed of the woman is going to bruise the head of the devil. And what God spoke to me after that is victory is imminent victory is here right now after echoing the words of pastor this morning we have gotten the victory after an eight year long battle the victory is here but i'd like to ask the question are you going to continue to believe that are you going to continue to walk like you have the victory you see in this scripture jesus had performed miracles he had performed uh, opened the eyes of the blind but they still didn't believe him and numbers 13 30 through 31 it says and caleb stilled the people before moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it but the men that went up with him said we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we are and in this portion of scripture only joshua and caleb were able to enter the promised land but one thing particular in the scripture is that the people were speaking very negative things we have to be careful of what we allow people to speak to us because death and life is in the power of the tongue especially if you're a holy ghost believer and you've been baptized in jesus name you literally have the power to speak to a sickness and it be healed you have the power to speak to a disease and it be gone because you have the power of the creator the one true living god living inside of you so you have to be careful on who is around and who is speaking to your life but another thing is that the children of Israel didn't know the power that they had or who was going with them. They had God going with them, but they decided to not only let the other 10 spies speak to them and allow them to speak into their life, but they also still had that slave mentality in their head. They were the people who left Egypt. And although they had left Egypt, they had not gotten the Egypt out of them. Although they were out of Egypt and they were free, they still had the slave mindset in their mind that we are still captive. And that's a problem with a lot of people, even myself sometimes. You see, a lot of people suffer with a carnal mind or a carnal mindset. Romans 8, 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And when I say carnal mind, I'm not talking about someone who's constantly thinking on things of the flesh and plotting to do things of the flesh, but someone who has not come to the true realization of who they are through Jesus Christ. You see, a lot of people in church, they have the Holy Ghost, but they don't realize that they are now a child of the King. They no longer have to deal with the things of the flesh, but they are a child of the King. They have the Creator living inside of them. Once you've been baptized in Jesus' name, all your sins have been washed away. 
But people need to realize this, that you have victory. You have power over the, over the flesh. You don't have to deal with that anymore because you have victory over it. You have to walk in the victory that you have. Once you realize who you are through Jesus and the victory that he has given you, then it's time to start acting like you have the victory. Stop walking around feeling sorry because you have the creator living inside of you. Come on, somebody. If you know how you have the creator living inside of you and you have the victory, give a shout unto God right now. You don't have to be scared of the enemy. If the enemy's trying to attack you, rebuke him in Jesus' name. If a sickness comes over your life, you know what you need to do? Speak to that sickness and rebuke it in Jesus' name by the authority of the word of God and by the power of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And instead of being on the defensive, go on the offensive. The Bible said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. But gates are not an offensive weapon. So we have to go out and tear down the strongholds that are in the gates of hell. So again I ask, whose report will you believe? But as for me, I shall believe the report of the Lord. Be blessed.